octave of St. Stephen. The lesson is taken from the sermons of St. Austin, Bishop of Hippo. Even after the glory of yesterday, bright with the splendor of Christ our Savior's birth, this day findeth itself an illumination of its own from the crown of the blessed martyr Stephen. The whole earth knew with how manfully he fought and conquered, for he suffered at the very fountainhead of the church, that is to say, in Jerusalem. It was in the church there that he ministered as a deacon, and in the youthful springtime of life dyed with his blood the lily of his purity. His passion is very glorious, and many ways wonderful, and when we read it in the Acts of the Apostles, we seem rather to see than to hear. Christ, the captain of the martyrs, hath first suffered for us, leaving us an example that we should follow his steps. And truly, blessed Stephen followed them, when, having confessed Christ, he was stoned to death by the Jews, and obtained the crown which his name had for us shown. For the meaning of the Greek name Stephanos is a crown. Already he had a crown for his name, a foreshadowing of the martyr's palm which he barreth in heaven. When they stoned him he did not rejoice at the thought that God would take vengeance on his persecutors. On the contrary, he prayed that they might be forgiven. For he remembered the word of the Lord, that saith, Vengeance belongeth unto me, I will recompense, saith the Lord, and again, say not thou. I will recompense evil to mine enemies, but wait on the Lord, and he shall save thee. The Lord God bideth us also be patient, knowing that in the great day of retribution, we, as well as his holy martyrs, shall be righted. Amen. The lesson is taken from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. In Elo Tempo Rei. At the time, Jesus said unto the scribes and Pharisees, Behold, I send unto you prophets, and wise men, and scribes, and some of them ye shall kill and crucify. And so on. Homily by St. Jerome, priest at Bethlehem. O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, thou that killest the prophets. The Jerusalem that killed the prophets was not the material stone and houses, but they that dwelt therein. He wept over her with the Father's love, as also it is written in another place that, when he saw the city, he wept over it. How often would I have gathered thy children together? Here observe that Christ avoweth that he had been the sender of all the former prophets. Even as an hen gathereth her chickens under her wings. A similar figure is found in the Song of Moses in Deuteronomy, as an eagle stirreth up her nest, fluttereth over her young, spreadeth abroad her wings, taketh them, and barreth them on her wings. Behold your house is left unto you desolate. God had already spoken these things once before, by the mouth of Jeremiah, where he saith, I have forsaken mine house, I have left mine heritage. Mine inheritance is become unto me like an hyena's den. The house of the Jews, which was to be left unto them desolate, is that temple, whose splendor they loved only too well, when they slew the owner of it for the sake of it, and said of Christ, This is the heir. Come, let us kill him, and the inheritance shall be ours. For I say unto you, Ye shall not see me henceforth, till ye shall say, Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Here he speaketh to Jerusalem and to the Jewish people. The words, Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord, were indeed spoken by babes and sucklings when the Saviour entered Jerusalem in triumph, and they that went before and they that followed, cried, saying, Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest but they are originally taken from Psalm 26, which Psalm is all evidently written in honor of the coming of our Lord. Amen. Benedicat vos omnipotens Deus, Potter, et Filius, et Spiritus Sanctus. Amen.